Those cells are designed to sense force or weight under a wide range of adverse conditions. They are not only the most essential part of an electronic weighing system, but also the most vulnerable. Those cells might be damaged because of shock loading, overloading, lightning strikes, or heavy electrical surges in general, chemical or moisture ingress, mishandling like dropping, lifting on cable, etc., vibration, or internal component malfunction. As a direct result, the scale or system might drift, provide unstable slash unreliable readings. Will not register at all. This video is created to assist users with potential low cell problems. It describes basic field tests which can be performed on site, and provides the information necessary to interpret the results. In general, carefully check the system integrity before evaluating the low cells. Check for force shunts, which might be caused by dirt, mechanical misalignment. Or accompanying components such as stay or track rod. Check for damage, corrosion, or significant wear in the areas of low introduction. Check cable connections to junction box and indicator. Check the measuring device or indicator with an accurate low cell simulator. Visually inspect the low cells before performing the tests as described above. Pay particular attention to signs of corrosion, especially around the critical gauge area, the integrity of the cable, which might be compromised due to cuts, abrasions, etc. And the condition of the cable entry. If everything's okay in physical checks, then let's move on to electrical checks. First, let's perform a zero balance check to identify if the strain gauge has undergone permanent deformation. Position the load cell with no load attached. Connect the input to a stable load noise power supply. With a multimeter, measure the output voltage in millivolt. And divided by the input voltage in volt, which in our case is 10 volts DC, to get millivolt slash volt. Refer to the calibration certificate of the low cell to see if this millivolt slash volt value is within the tolerance of low cell specification. Check for zero return. Connect the low cell to a stable power supply and measure the millivolt per volt output like the step before. Make sure it is within the allowed tolerance. Load the low cell between 50% to 100% of its capacity for 5 seconds. Remove the load and check if the millivolt per volt output returns to the allowed tolerance. Check insulation. Use a multimeter to check insulation of wire leads to the metal body of the low cell. If the resistance is below 2 giga ohms, then the insulation is bad. Ideally, the insulation resistance should be more than 5 giga ohms. Check input and output resistance with a multimeter to make sure it is within the allowed tolerance of the product. Refer to the calibration certificate. A difference of more than 0.1 ohm signifies a bad low cell. Here is a note. You may obtain different resistance measurements due to different types of multimeters that you use to test your specific low cell. What's more, different low cells are developed with different strain gauges and have different resistance values. So, it is essential to check with the manufacturer on what they should read and the tolerance. That's all for this tutorial video. If these don't fix your problems, feel free to contact us and discuss the issues with our technical specialists. We'll be happy to help you prevent them for a long-lasting weighing device. 
By the way, if you happen to need low cells or other associated weighing products for installation or replacement, contact us as well, or go directly to our website to search for the ideal item that best fits your need.